Over to me. Over to you, Roger. All right. Um, yeah, so this fall I talked about acting courageously. I'm going to, uh, or I'm sorry, this fall I talked about how, if we could, um, uh, how we can learn and maybe teach courage. Um, so now that maybe we've learned it or taught it, um, it's time to, in these uncertain times, maybe to have to act courageously. Um, so that's what I will, I'm going to talk about this morning. Um, but first I want to talk about basketball. Um, <laughs> uh, first of all, uh, it, and you can maybe register in chat. Does anybody want to take a guess of where I did my undergrad? Um, so, <laughs> so that's Steph Curry. So he's currently with uh, Golden State. Uh, and some people have said that he has got the perfect jump shot. Um, so he has mastered that he has mastered the three point shot. Um, and so how do you do that? Um, luckily, Aristotle helps with this. Um, so, so becoming virtuous in anything for Aristotle is a three point or a three step process. Um, the first step is you got to want it. I mean, you've got to really want to be virtuous badly. Um, you know, Steph Curry's dad was, uh, he was an NBA player. Uh, so he probably grew up watching his dad and, and maybe really wanting to do that. Um, but desire is not enough. Uh, you can't just want something. Um, you have to know what that thing is. Um, so if I want to... Uh, shoot the perfect jump shot. I have to study the jump shot right? and I can do that by reading books, by watching, um, uh, by watching players, by talking to my dad, seeing exemplars out there of people who say that's a great jump shot. Let me see what it is. Um, so I, I really want to do it and I know what a perfect jump shot is. Again, I'm almost there. And then the last thing I have to do is I have to practice it um, but, but practice is probably not quite a, a full enough word. Um, uh, and here Aristotle really likes the term habituating. So I'm going to practice something and practice something and practice something uh, until it becomes a settled disposition, until I don't have to think about the perfect jump shot anymore. Um, yeah, and Steph Curry used to do that. In fact, he would always practice long before uh, practice started, and he would never leave the court until he swished five uh, free throws in a row. Um, so courage is also a virtue. Uh, in fact, um, for Aristotle, and I, I apologize to, for saying Aristotle a, a bunch of times here. I need to stop doing that. There's no quicker way of shutting down a conversation than saying, well, according to Aristotle, um, but, but this does kind of come from him. So, um, but courage is one of his primary virtues. Uh, and I think, therefore, the same three steps are going to obtain. So I got to want to, uh, I want to have that, uh, I have the desire to become a virtuous person. I got to know what virtue is. Uh, and then I have to practice virtue, that virtue, I have to practice courage. Um, so you all are giving up an hour of your time to talk about courage um, and how it relates to the current circumstance. Uh, so I'm going to kind of take desire as a given. Um, and I want to talk for about 15 minutes about what courage is and then how we practice that. Um, and then we'll break out into our uh, breakout sessions and then uh, think about these things, uh, the, these larger ideas, uh, given our current circumstance uh, and also given our current circumstance there in Wyoming, how it applies to y'all. Um, so, We'll start by by not with knowledge and what so what is courage um and this is a for those of you who heard me in um wyoming this is a bit of a or i'm sorry in the fall this is a bit of a rehash um so i'll do it quickly uh, you would think that at the naval academy where i teach we would be uh, we would all be experts on courage 
what's interesting is we're not. And if you talk to a dozen different people on what courage is, you get a, do a dozen different answers. Um, so we started a project there called Project Babel, um, where we're looking at these big uh, um, uh, words that we use all the time, like honor and courage and integrity, and, and really digging into them and saying, okay, what do they actually mean? Um, I assigned myself to project or to the team courage, um, and we worked through the courage. We we looked at about a dozen different authors and uh, and waded into it. And not to belabor it, but here's what we came up with. Um, so courage is taking the right or noble action despite known risks, um, and typically despite fear, although not always. Um, and I mean, just because you one does something courageous does not make them a courageous person. Um, but you are a courageous person if you have, if you possess the virtue of courage, which is a settled disposition to act courageously. So just like Steph Curry can just, you know, pop those shots. Uh, if you have a settled, if you have the virtue of courage, of courage, you have that settled disposition to act that way. Um, and, you know, there's always been this kind of push and pull between moral courage and physical courage. Uh, I think it is um, uh, an important thing to distinguish between. Uh, but it's not that one is better than the other. Um, they are just different. Uh, and they're different based on the type of risk you're facing. So if it's, uh, if it's physical courage, then you act despite a known risk of bodily harm. If it's moral courage, um, you act it despite a known risk of either social or psychic or economic or, or political harm. Um, and you know, I was thinking in the current circumstance, and you all may want to think about this later, um, we are asking people to, um, to draw on both of those, both of those manifestations of courage. Okay. Um, we also kind of tore apart the components of courage. And I'm not going to go into this in detail uh, again, because I did in the fall, and I don't want to rehash them too, too much. Um, but I believe that there's really three components. The first one is self-awareness, just kind of knowing what your physical, um, uh, mental, uh, emotional limitations are. And if you know where those limitations are, you can bump right up against them. You can push yourself all the way against them. The other is self-control. Um, so whenever you're in a situation that demands you to draw on courage, chances are it's gonna be a, a somewhat chaotic situation full of uncertainties. Uh, and when you're confronted with too many uncertainties, you tend to just break down. Um, and you try to control everything and you quickly learn you can't control everything. What you can control is yourself. And so self-control is a key component uh, to courage. Uh, and the final component is love. Uh, love for someone, uh, love for something. Um, you have to be able to, you will not be able to manifest courage uh, unless you, uh, you love something else at least as much as you love yourself. Um, otherwise, you're not going to do it, especially depending on how much risk you're facing. Okay, so that goes to the knowledge component of courage. Um, and, and I guess maybe I'll save my questions to the end. I didn't hit my go button, so we'll see. I'll try to hit 20 minutes, Mandy. Maybe you can give me a five minute warning because the, the rest of it is uh, maybe a little bit more of what we want to talk about. Um, okay, so th this is now the idea of practicing or habituating courage. Okay, so now we're talking about actually taking this knowledge and bringing it and applying it to whatever situation we're confronted with. So here's a basic premise. Um, and that is that, uh, that what I value will drive how I act. Um, and if that's the case, oh, and, and by the way, that is, uh, this really is what integrity is about. This is another word we throw around a lot and we try to get uh, kind of the ground truth on what integrity is. 
Um, and when you want to get you want to get to the bottom of what a word is, I think looking at its uh, roots is a good place to start. And uh, integrity comes from uh, the Latin integrare, which is to make whole, which suggests that uh, integrity is about um, is about parts and about taking parts and making them whole. And in this case, the parts are how I act and what I value. Um, and so if I value courage, uh, like I think probably everybody here does, um, then, and then I act courageously, then I am a person of integrity um, and all's well. And um, if I, uh, and when I act courageously, that actually informs my values and informs my character and it, it increases the likelihood um, that I will act courageously again. Um, just as when I make a, when I make a perfect three point shot, the more I do it, uh, the more likely it is I'll make it again and again. And this is that part of habituation. Um, so that at some point acting courageously, um, becomes a settled disposition. It's just what we do. It's just who we are. Um, and, and that's that virtuous cycle um, that makes us increasingly courageous. But um, we don't always do that. Um, even, even the most courageous amongst us um, sometimes fail to act courageously. Um, and when that happens, so if I'm a person who values courage and then I fail to act courageously, um, I, I'm now no longer a person of integrity um, based on the, 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 the genuine uh, definition of that word. Uh, and I'll experience cognitive dissonance. Um, whether I know it or not, my, uh, my brain is going to say something's wrong here. I can't hold these two truths together of I value this and yet this is what I have just done. Um, and what's interesting is you're, you're not going to live with that very long. Um, in, integrity is a funny thing. I mean, we're kind of always people of integrity. We're going to join those two things together one way or the other. We're going to put our actions and our values back together um, because we just, our, our brains just can't stand to be in that condition of cognitive dissonance. Unfortunately, um, typically this is how we do it. Um, rather than kind of raising the bar on our values and adjusting those, or I'm sorry, on our actions and adjusting our actions to match our values. We do the opposite. We, we adjust our values to match what just happened. Um, we, and we do this through a series of rationalizations, whether we do it um, overtly or not. In fact, typically we don't. Um, typically this is happening um, again, our, our minds can't live with cognitive dissonance. So we're going to explain to ourselves why we fail to act courageously. And we're going to give ourselves a really good answer for that, um, maybe without even thinking about it. Um, and that's going to probably increase the likelihood that we fail to act courageously again. Um, and we start habituating those um, um, those ideals until, you know, maybe courage is something that I sort of value. Um, and, and we, and that, again, it degrades that, uh, it degrades us, it degrades our values. And then maybe at some point this is, um, courage is something I don't value at all because I just can't act courageously. I can't live with that. So maybe this just isn't, maybe prudence is something that I value more than courage. Um, so this is the vicious cycle. Um, and by the way, this, um, a lot of this comes from a, um, uh, that guy in the corner. He wrote this great article in 2003, uh, Integrity, Its Causes and Its Cures. I, I recommend it. Uh, it's just an interesting way of thinking about integrity. Uh, it, it can show how integrity uh, isn't necessarily always an awesome thing. It can actually drive us 
in bad directions because we all need to be people of integrity. Okay. Um, but it also can work in a different direction. And, and this is probably where we need to, to hopefully drive um, that feeling of, of cognitive dissonance. Um, we, uh, when we fail to act courageously, we feel it, we feel that something's wrong. Um, and, and we get critical feedback. Um, that can come from self-reflection. Um, we, we look at ourselves in the mirror and we say, ah, oh, dude, that's, that's not me. That's not the, the person my mom raised. That's not who I, uh, who I see myself as. And I don't feel right about that. Or um, uh, hopefully I've got good friends who will come up and say, dude, um, you failed to act courageously. Um, that's not you. Uh, and, and if we are fortunate enough to be able to recognize this, rather than rationalizing that behavior, we take some sort of corrective action. You know, we do something to fix it. Um, we confess, we go, we, we talk to our friends, it's like, oh dude, I was a coward. Um, we confess it to ourselves. We make amends, we go back and maybe we try it again. Um, we do something so that um, so that this actually can then again feed the virtuous cycle, uh, and maybe even more so. And so, so maybe once we've restored that, um, I, I perhaps I should have written "act courageously" and "value courage" in bold letters here. So now we really say, "Yes, I get it. Now I get courage." Um, and, and I'm probably more a courageous person having, having had that failure, um, and having recovered from that failure. Okay. I just want to give one example. Um, and then I'm going to turn the mic back over. Um, and so this is my, this is my opening slide. I don't, you know, I'm sure everybody, um, recognized um, Mother Teresa and, and Dr. King. Um, and, and maybe if, if you recognize, uh, does anybody recognize the dude with the beard next to Mother Teresa? If you do, just kind of unmike and, and say it. Lieutenant Murphy. Yeah, nice. Thanks, Joshua. Um, yeah, that's Mike Murphy. Um, He's and it just uh, if you read the book uh, Lone Survivor or saw the movie, uh, he was the guy that um, uh, during that that uh, failed operation in Afghanistan, he he climbed up that abutment, uh, knowing that it was going to cost him his life, and made the radio call for the Quick Reaction Force. But that's not the story I'm going to tell. Um, yeah, you're a good dog. Uh, that's not the story I'm going to tell. Um, I want to tell the story about the next person over, uh, next to Mike Murphy, uh, and um, that's Megan. And I'm sorry that I don't remember Megan's last name. Uh, this was on a 2015 um, uh, Knowles expedition. It was actually, uh, Mandy, my first expedition as an instructor. Um, Mandy was my instructor for my instructor course, and she was my mentor. Um, so this was my first uh, course, uh, Mandy, or I'm sorry, Megan, um, here she is again in, in between those two handsome men. Um, Megan is a Naval Academy. She was a Naval Academy uh, sophomore at the time, or a youngster as we call them. Um, obviously she's somebody who values courage. Um, Everybody at the Naval Academy, I think, values courage. And so we'd assume that she'd always act courageously. Um, our expedition, and by the way, this was a, an all Naval Academy expedition. Um, our expedition was in the Absorcas uh, in your backyard. Um, oh my gosh, it's beautiful. Um, we were, uh, we were, this picture comes from, um, I think, 
the day before we were going to um, get up early the next morning and do a, a summit. We were base camping and we were going to do a, um, uh, we were going to bag a summit there in the Ozorcas. Um, and there's Megan all happy and, um, and we're looking forward to it. Anyway, we get up at, um, we get up with the farm animals the next day and, uh, and we start our, our, our climb. Um, and I'd say maybe two thirds into it, um, it became apparent we were going to have to, we were exposed several times, um, and, uh, and sort of some, some class four bouldering. And, um, so it wasn't an easy summit and all of a sudden Megan kind of crouches down and she goes, I can't go on. Um, and at this point she, uh, confesses to us that she's deathly afraid of heights and it's like oh okay um, so we're there for a bit as she's she's trying to work through this and um, and it was it was really sweet uh, you could see a, a sort of a uh, she wasn't crying but there was a tear in the corner of her eye as she's uh, confronting this um, and so finally, Steve, my, my co-instructor and I decided, um, that, that Steve would take the rest of the crew up, um, and I'd stay there with Megan and then we'd walk, walk back to our base camp. Um, so clearly we have, um, Megan, she's, she's, um, she's a person who values courage and now she's, she's facing this fact that she's failing to act courageously. And so she's, working through cognitive dissonance and certainly there was she could have rationalized and turned this around and done something uh, but instead instead she was looking at herself in the mirror and saying you know dude this is not you um and she took the positive steps to to change this um and that positive step was something that was just amazing um so uh, we're sitting there and, and we were probably there for about 20 minutes as she's working through this because coming down is not going to be any easier. Um, and she, she looks at me and she goes, Roger, I can't do this. Again, with tears on either side of her eye, uh, her eyes. And she goes, and, and that's why I've got to do this. Oh, I'm getting choked up talking about it. <laughs> um, and so, uh, and so she summited. So we, she and I then went up and finished that last third um, and, and joined the crew up there at the summit. Um, and that's, that's Megan up there. Uh, and I think one of the best parts of this story is what Megan, uh, and I'm not saying it was to this day, but it's just sort of a testament to her courage. Um, what Megan is doing now is she's a, um, a first lieutenant in the Marine Corps, and she's uh, she's a, a, a helo pilot. This person deathly afraid of heights. Um, so, I think. Oh, okay. Um, so that's it. Um, that's what I wanted to talk about today. And I do have some questions for discussion. Um, and Mandy, should I turn to those? Yeah, go ahead and turn to those um, and we'll give folks a chance to look at them briefly and then I can also share them out um, as we jump into kind of some smaller groups as well. But go ahead so folks can get a look at them. Okay, cool. Um, so I, I thought of maybe three things that are worth talking about. Um, you know, at, as we think about what courage is um, and how we how we either can act courageously or not act courageously and, and habituate that or fail to. Um, the first question um, is, is given what we know about the emerging healthcare and economic crises, you know, what situations in the months ahead are likely to test us, um, test both our moral courage and our physical courage? Um, the other one is, okay, what will cowardly behavior look like and how will we call it out uh, when we see it, when we see it in other people? Uh, and finally, how are we going to see those failures in ourselves? Um, 
you know, what mechanisms are in place to make sure that we don't um, fail to see them and we just rationalize and we move down that vicious cycle that leads us to a, a degraded uh, character. Awesome. Thank you, Roger. Um, that was fantastic telling of stories and also sharing of, of a model, I think, of how we think and, and speak about courage. So um, round of applause, silent round of applause for Roger. <laughs> By, by the, by the way, I've, um, so we're now uh, at the Naval Academy, we've gone, um, uh, we're doing this now, we're, we're teaching remotely. Um, I've taught two classes remotely now. Um, and it's not, I'm not getting better at it. Uh, so what I've discovered is that I'm at least 25% better looking and 25% funnier in person. So as you uh, <laughs> consider my performance there, please add that 25% onto it. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Thank you. I, we, some of us may be stealing that, uh, that request. Um, <laughs> right. that, is, that is awesome. Um, and I think our, our goal of having these conversations via Leadership Wyoming is that we know all of you are making hard decisions every single day that affect your families, your employees, your students, your constituents, your communities, and our state and country. And so we want you to have some space to think about how you're making decisions, reflect on it, and maybe notice if there is some cognitive dissonance of decisions that you've made in the last week or that you may make in the future and also have a place to, to think and talk about those and have support for, okay, what does it look like if I wanna be that person who says, I virtue or I value courage. I want to act courageously, but I'm not sure I can at this time. And to taking, I think Roger's model is neat because it is literally taking the high road of re realigning to the value versus the low road of rationalizing your behavior to lower your values. Um, and so how do we take that high road in Wyoming on a small scale? Maybe it's with your own individual single business or on a large scale as an entire state of people who face not only health concerns, but economic concerns for the current day. And also as we project out into the longer run of what Wyoming will look like as we emerge from this, uh, with many of our top sources of revenue bruised, battered, um, and deflated. And so that's, I think, our goal for having this conversation today. Um, and so just as we would in a leadership Wyoming classroom have round tables where a group could talk about this and share a little bit of their own journey and where they're processing things, we're going to send you into breakout rooms um, 